Hey, what's up, Leron here. I wanna show you something really fun and simple today. Uh, so if you are having trouble with uh, things like controlling the paint, wet and wet, and it's something that a lot of people have trouble with. Uh, I have this cool exercise. I actually show it in my frustration-free watercolor course, so be sure to check that out. Uh, if you're interested, you'll see. Uh, if that's something you struggle with, that's the kind of things we also dive into uh, in that course. So what I like to do is just grab some water and paint, uh, just pre-wet an area. Um, and I make sure I do it thoroughly. And I'm using a used piece of paper. I actually have a, a, a lot of sketches on the other side of this. But don't be scared to really uh, wet it well. You see here, um, very shiny, uh, a strong gleam. That's perfectly okay here for what we're doing. I like to do it uh, like a portrait orientation just because it gives me some room to work. And then I grab whatever I have on the palette um, and I start putting it in wet and wet. Now. The idea is if you've never um, played around with wet and wet enough, what we're doing is just playing around with colors uh, in a wet surface uh, with no pressure of it being a part of a finalized painting or anything that needs to look good in the end. Um, and this is why I think this is, this is very useful. So look at what I'm doing. I'm just bringing in some uh, paint onto my palette and I'm putting it in. And what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at the response of the paint and trying to figure out what it does. Uh, so if I'm using, for example, very wet paint, right? I'm grabbing this, this is very wet paint. This is very wet paint on paper and just seeing how it reacts. Um, it's almost like building muscle memory. You don't need to think about it even. You just have to go through the process of doing it a few times. Uh, and it'll start clicking. Now, here, once the paper is dry, what's going to happen if I come back with very, you know, very wet paint? So you'll start to see very, very gentle hints of the the water moving the paint aside. It's going to happen very gently, but you will notice it. Then I like to introduce some more paint. Um, I like to do this with different temperatures. I find it more fun and more... Um, uh, more entertaining for me to watch what happens if we just splash some paint, right? Uh, how it spreads out, you know, it's a, it's an opportunity also to get accustomed to uh, your, your paints and how they spread in water because different paints will work differently. Now, what happens if we really dig into the well, as you see me doing here, and then putting that paint, right? So it's going to show a bit more, right? Um, so how does that work as opposed to doing it with very wet paint? Do you see the difference here? You see how it's very hard sometimes to note, but around the edges, it's going to spread out the paint that already started settling, right? What's going to happen if we come back with just some, not clean, but some water here and go back on that. And I call that like a wild session. You're just letting paint do its thing. The one important thing is, you know, sometimes the basis of what we do is is the most important thing to build upon. The things that come later fail sometimes because the basis is wrong. So what's the basis for this exercise? Having an, a wet enough area. Because if it's now fully dry by the time we're, we're at this stage, it's not good. But look, it's still wet. The reason it's still wet is because I took the time to thoroughly pre-wet it. Okay. Now, as it starts to dry, I'm going to continue experimenting. So let's put a bit of carbazole violet on paper here. And what happens if I put it here, for example, where it's still quite wet, as opposed to this area that's starting to dry, how is it going to react? Um, these kinds of things, you know, your, your, your brain will remember to the visual image of that's how wet the paper is, that's how wet my mix is, this is the reaction I get. OK, and uh, you'll build this kind of reference experience, reference memory by simply doing it. Uh, one more fun thing you can incorporate into it is if you have some opaque paint, you can test that out. That's something I like to do. Let's, so let's do it just for fun. So I have my um, designer's gouache here. This is actually gouache paint. And I'm going to use my other brush. And look at what happens once I just, you know, grab a bit of that opaque paint and put it almost out of the tube into the water. Look at how it mixes. Now, what happens if I cover darker paint with it? Look at what happens. The paint it starts enveloping it, and that's something you'll see often happen. You'll have the opaque paint in the middle, and then the rest of the paint almost uh, covers it up. Sometimes it'll spread depending on how wet, again, the paper is, and your brush and mix on the brush, right? Now, you have a lot of places with 
um, wetness that you kind of want to follow. And now let's grab a bit of warm paint. Let's see what happens. Now it's mixing with my opaque paint, which is fine. Again, you're building experience here. That's the thing. You're building experience in a fun way, low, um, low stakes, right? It's not a painting. You've worked really hard to sketch it out accurately. And then you're very timid when you work on it. Uh, it's just... A mess and that's what it's meant to be now what will happen here's an interesting experiment for you uh, let's soak back some of the water here at the bottom but if you've been doing this for a while and you feel free a lot of the times what will happen is you'll get questions like what would happen if I touch this wet edge with let's say some strong paint look look at what's gonna happen look at how they merge together Look at how the line blurs and look at how some paint will go down, but some paint will move up, right? And if you play around with the angle of paper, of course, that's going to influence it too. So it's one of those things that you, you have to learn by doing, right? You can't really read the theory of water to paint ratio. You can't read about doing push-ups. You have to do them. Now, I'm not even saying you have to do this a lot. I'm not saying I don't want to uh, embed any useless limiting beliefs in you that it has to take a long time and it's a lot of hard work. Not not really. The whole point here is to do a lengthy practice session where you're practicing doing wet and wet at length, a long time, experimenting with different levels of wetness, right? Tilt the paper, look at it, see how wet it is, and then figure out how the paint reacts just by building that experience, right? And doing it in a very isolated environment where you're not too worried about the, the end result you're not too stressed about ruining something you worked a long time on that's the whole thing and by the way look at the, this is a really beautiful result so sometimes you look at this and i would actually challenge you this is a good point to make actually and i want you to leave a comment let me know if it if it applied to you look at this whatever result you got or whatever result I got, okay? Compare it to one of your paintings where you feel you were maybe too tight. Tell me which one is more beautiful. <laughs> to me, if I grab a bunch of my paintings here that I have um, and I compare them to this, I would have to sadly say that this looks better because a lot of what makes watercolor beautiful, and this is, again, Highly subjective, take it with a grain of salt, but very often a lot of what makes watercolor beautiful is that sense of the paint's will, the paint's own will, and the way it wants to move as opposed to how I force it to move and where I force it to be, right? And this has all of that freedom, while maybe uh, a painting that you worked in in small sections and, and you got maybe too much in your head won't have that quality to it. Same applies for my painting. So it's very interesting to see how with little um, mental effort you can create something that's just beautiful, just a beautiful mess, right? Now, if you're getting a gray mess, if you used a lot of colors and you end up with a gray weird thing, that's that tells me maybe you're mixing them too much. Again, there is no right or wrong here. I'm just saying the result of mixing a lot on the palette. And um, I had one more thing to say about that. Um, you're not using thick enough paints because the reason these brush marks even are still visible is because I used very thick paint with with the purples and, and oranges. So that's an insight you can gain from doing this kind of an exercise, right? So let me know if that applies to you. If you want to learn uh, the approach for painting more freely, more loosely, still getting the results you want, doing paintings that are very creative but technically solid and respect watercolors nature uh, be sure to check out the frustration free watercolor course i will put a link again in the description box below uh, it's i think one of my best uh, courses it actually solves that problem for you um, so then you can go ahead and take it in the direction you want if you want to go more realistic if you want to go more loose more abstract it applies to everything but that fundamental basis is that freedom and, and getting out of the paint's way that's the most important thing in that context, I think. Um, getting out of the paints and water's way, letting them do their thing, and then you can play around with the control like a volume knob and actually decide, okay, I want this much control, I don't want this much control. Uh, but in any case, thank you so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you in the next read.